have asked for an emergency call to the uh, May 5th meeting of the uh, Open Space Committee. Could we please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The first item is the approval of the uh, uh, April uh, minutes. Yeah, if, you, okay. if you had a chance to review them, uh, make a motion that they be approved as submitted. Motion. Second. Second. Seconded. All those in favor? I vote. Hmm? Not change. No vote. Good. Okay. Minutes are approved. Uh, revisions to agenda. Um, Woody has a, uh, uh, another uh, has a conflict and he has to leave very shortly, so uh, I would like to uh, have Woody give his uh, uh, report uh, on the dump the junk and the wood cutting program. So Woody, could you go ahead and give us uh, an outline of what happened? Yeah, we had a very successful, I mean successful dump the junk. It was unbelievable. I've never seen so much stuff come in my life in a long time. We filled it all up and uh, we hit the floor with a lot of wood, a lot of trash, we had about 50 tires, some treasures were coming in, they were even, they weren't hitting the deck and they were going out and he had a car. So uh, you, you had a conversation with somebody today about the extra trailers, two or three extras? Well, we were having conversations uh, and this is just talk right now, maybe we should consider having two extra trailers in the spring, 13 instead of 11, and then 11 in the fall, maybe we should try that as a proposal. Well, we're, we're, I'm sure that we're, we can fill it, but don't make any difference. Okay. Uh, another idea uh, is was kicked around is uh, John, who handles the DPS, could uh, come in Saturday afternoon after 4 o'clock and compact the uh, the trailers, you know, press them down so that. Is that that's a judgment call? Uh, <laughs> no, that that's that's an idea. Okay, <laughs> so that's something we might want to look at for okay. next year. Yeah, I know, I know. Okay, all right. Okay, so it was very successful, Woody. Yeah, it was. Thank you. Anything on the? Uh, what can I say something? Oh, don't oh I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, while I was working, a lot of people brought in paint. Uh -huh. This happens every year now. Right. Is there anything we can do to have the ability to accept paint? Fortunately, Flat Rock was open, and you gave me the flyers, and we were able to send everybody to Flat Rock. Yeah. But, um, right. But it really is an inconvenience for people to have to hunt around to find out how to get rid of that kind of paint. Well, we don't, we don't have the capacity. Okay, I'm have, just asking we again. Don't have the well, we don't okay. We did make suggestions that you put sawdust in it. Yes, and, I, was, I was giving them. And then also, uh, I was giving them everything I knew starting and, the um, paint, you know, you could probably yeah. burn it a little bit. Okay, I was just double checking because yeah. there were so many yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, this, this is, I was telling everybody October 10th that uh, the college of my North Line, Community College, on October 10th. But this one here it says June 20th at Henry Ford College at Evergreen Road in Dearborn, 8 to 2. June 20th? June 20th. Now, this is the household paints and dial electronic recycling. And uh, it's the computers and TVs and all that. We did have a couple people, even though we told them no, you know, they kept us busy and dropped a couple <laughs> TVs. <laughs> but could, that's could we put that on our on the I'm sure we could put it on the website. Yeah, why don't we put that on the website? Know, I'll do it. If it's nice to put it on the website, probably would be even better to make a sign. Put it where we, what we can and cannot accept. Put it right at the front of the oh. Yeah, but I mean, in the meantime, 
we're helping people out to know that there are ways to get it. There, there, there are several yeah. ways to handle paint, but we don't have the, the expertise, myself, I, I do this for a living. Right. I understand it, but you know, there are some paints that you could probably solidify and take. There are other paints that you can't. Depending upon their carriers and the solvents. So why even fool with it and take so it to the point is the point is exactly that. Uh, you don't want to make judgment calls out there. How do you know that the paint in the can is the paint that came in the can? Well, basically, just tell people to call the township and find out where to get rid of it. Yeah, yeah, well, the township the, gives them the information about it. About any ways we can put a sign up uh, uh, at four corners, and uh, but. That's a lot of stuff. That would, how much money would that cost us? We'll have to add that to that it. sign. Oh, that's, that no. Huh? It, it'd be a lot. Yeah, yeah. Right. that's what I mean. Yeah. It's yeah. for the words "household hazardous waste" and a date and a place wouldn't cost a lot. But if we put it on the on the website. Well, yeah. How many people look at the website? You can get a banner for under two hundred dollars, yeah. and you can use it for. Yeah, we could put it on the website and then also just pass out the flyers again. We could, uh, yeah, we could add that. To, we could put another, uh, add that to make a sign, and uh, what we cannot accept, uh, in other words, no paint, and make that a permanent sign, a one-time cost, and that, that would be it. Well, you know, I tried to get us to have the ability to take e-waste this time again, and it was a real battle, but I lost mm -hmm. the battle this time. Mm -hmm. But. I will, I will elaborate on that shortly. What's the waste? Electronic waste. Okay. But you know, right now I'm doing an electronic waste community event at the school next week Thursday. And but even though we have put out 150 posters and put it on a 36,000 person e-blast throughout the, the school, and, and there are going to be people that are going to show up there that are going to want to leave a refrigerator or a washing machine. There's going to be another group of people that think that if they bring something in, they can take something out. And because e-waste has got sensitive data in it, often in their in their hard drives and their memory systems, you can't let people go fishing through stuff like Unless that. You put so it's it. always a, it's not unique to Grow Seal. It's every time you have an event, there are going to be people. They're going to want to operate outside the event's parameters, and you just have to stop them. So. We, we want to help all we can, but there are things that we can't accept. Now, I do have some interesting news for the fall of it. Okay. Okay, what is it? Mm -hmm. I've spoken to the folks that did our event last year. The commodity of recycled e-waste has plummeted in its value in the last year. Things that they were able to do last year for free for us, this year, they're doing similar events for one of the communities in Western Wayne County, a one-day event, $2,500 charge. No way. No. So no way. I said, you know, we, we can't afford that. We don't, we don't want to do that. What can you do? Well, what they offered was the possibility of us spotting an overseas container at the DPW. You know what an overseas container yeah. is. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we would have to have somebody supervise what goes in it, which means you get you get a key, and you get a key, and I get a key, and if somebody wants to put e-waste in there, we have to open it up for we you. Have to put it down, down. So we have to babysit it. And I'm not well, babysitting. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. It's not so much babysitting. Because if you do it on a monthly basis for two hours, oh, it's not okay. too That's bad. That's better. That's better. You know, it's not, I, I, I got a computer, I'm bringing it down right now, get over there and open it for me. It doesn't work that way. But we would be allowed to accumulate into this overseas container, and when it's full, call them to help you. No charge. But you know, you know as well as I do, you're going to have it open for two hours, and they're going to come up, and they're going to say, well, I saw it open. I saw it shown. It was supposed to be at another time than this. And we go through this routine every time. Unfortunately, that's the way some people... I know that, but, uh, you know... They would say once in a while. He put it in the newspaper. He put it in the newspaper, and I had an argument with a guy. They said, "Nope, nope, that's not in there. It's right there." And he looks at it and he says, "No paint," but he said, it's, "It is paint." So you got to go around and around and around. No, I don't go around and around. I don't either. I mean, they didn't like what I said. I but that was, 
We don't we don't go around and around and say yes or no. Yeah. Well, so it's got to go a little farther than yes or no. Sometimes. Well, let's uh, let's try this in addition to the overseas container uh, to uh, Pat's comment. The possibility of putting put that on the website. Well, we can't, uh, you know, the documents that you have, Pat. Right. And in addition to that, we could pay, let's say, a couple hundred dollars, have it put in the camera as an ad. That's, that's not, not right. effective. And there aren't really that many people okay. who get All the right. camera, I'm finding. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, Nobody reads the papers anymore. Uh, and there's a sufficient number of people who don't have internet service or are internet literate. Right? And this is not a knock on them. It's just, you know, some All people right, like it and some people we'll don't. We'll put the sign back up on four corners and they say hazardous waste this date. Yeah. Okay. Let's try that. That's the way it works. Okay. We'll try right. that. Okay. Have we, by the way, I will continue to pursue the the logistics of that. Okay. So you once I got something out of the box, okay. and use that yeah. okay. Well, you got the permission to put it at the DPS. What you, as far as the uh, as far as the wood cutting's uh, done there for until uh, July fifteenth, unless somebody opens it up. But if it isn't, we're not we're not doing anything until July fifteenth. Okay. It could be extended. I don't know. We'll find out. Okay. All right. Anything else, Woody? No, sir. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Uh, as far as the uh, liaison, oh, one more thing as far as the uh, revisions to the agenda. I would like to uh, add an item. When we adjourn, we're going to adjourn to a closed uh, door session to have a quick review of uh, two possible property donations. And thank you for everybody that worked Saturday and Sunday. All right, as far as the liaison reports is concerned, Wally. Have a good, good day. Good day. Yeah. <laughs> Wally, anything to report as far as. You know, I've been kind of out of business for the last couple of weeks, and, okay. and I don't have a lot to tell you other than the. Uh, we are beginning the plans for the Bay of Deer event in the township in August. Uh, those of you who have not heard about it yet, Wayne State University is sponsoring a 100-mile bicycle ride. And a Bay of Deer is a warrior in French. And these, these warriors are, are go at your own speed, cover the distance any way you want to, and all the communities that from Gross Point down to Gros Eel, I've been soliciting and, and are going to participate by providing refreshment stations or, you know, something like that. We're going to, in the BPAC, we're going to have our Walk the Path event on that same day, August 22nd. So we have a refreshment station already there. We're going to give away free hot dogs and lemonade and, and frozen pops for the kids like we did last year. Uh, this is between Tom uh, Vesta and myself. Tom's not going to be there this year because he's riding in the 100 mile event on a bike. So good for Tom. But uh, two other things are going on in August, on August 22nd, which you should be aware of. One of them is the citywide garage sale. So that's three things going on. And that evening, Sacred Heart Church is celebrating their 100th anniversary. So anniversary, not anniversary. Uh, and uh, there's, a, there's a big event planned on the island. So there's going to be a lot of activity on August 22nd on the island. And I, I would suggest to you that uh, Greenway's Open Space might have some promotion literature and perhaps a table uh, set up at Macomb and Meridian at the gazebo area. Barry Van Engelen is going to provide entertainment by guitar. I'm going to be a solo singer some days. So that'll scare a lot of the little kids away anyway. The... Uh, the event's a nice event, and if you do, if you were there last year, uh, we we gave away almost 300 hot dogs. So well, I expect more this year. And if the guys riding the bikes want to run by and grab a bottle of water and a hot dog, that's great, and it's good publicity for our community. 
These are folks that should look around here. The bikes are going to come down Grosier Parkway. They're coming through Elizabeth Park. Down Grosier Parkway to Meridian. They'll make a left at Meridian and they will make a right on the comb and take all the way to go uh, to East River. Okay. East River to Horse Mill. Horse Mill back to Meridian and Meridian is the long run back to the bridge where they can and, really pick up. When is that going to happen again? August 22nd. Okay. So that's three months from now. But we'll be working towards getting it ready. So we're working to be a concerted effort for all parties to get involved in it. You want to come down there and promote your department? Please do. Now we know that young man. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. We will, we'll, obviously, we'll have, uh, I think we should have our uh, guide ready before then. We certainly will. Uh, Bert, anything? For the uh, Conservancy. Well, the Conservancy had a successful Earth Day event on Healthy Lawns on April 22nd, and now we are staffing the Gibraltar Bay unit of the refuge on Sundays again. So that's from 1 to 4, the refuge is open. Mm -hmm. When is that? Every Sunday now. Oh. Okay. Thank you, Bert. Leah, uh, anything about the recreation? Yes, we, we're, we've been uh, very busy. Uh, I um, we kind of goofed up my report because uh, Anne was here for me while I was in Europe, mm -hmm. and then she forgot to bring her notes. But we did manage to get in about the uh, uh, about the uh, cutting with the concern about perhaps not doing cutting right now, and the uh, jump the junk. We did. Mm -hmm. Between the two of us, we managed to get that in. So okay. I apologize for not being more detailed, but it was just one of those nights. Okay. Um, the kayak season is beginning. Uh, the West River Yacht and Cruising Club uh, is getting back to work at Water's Edge also. Um, where um, soccer fields are uh, work, uh, working out. We have a tremendous number of people participating in that. Um, the uh, proposals for the uh, restaurant, uh, there, are, there have been three of them presented, and Sharkey's chose not to um, put in a, a, a appeal. So there will be a new person there eventually. Um, Is it open now? Yeah. No, but through December 31st. Yeah, yeah, but oh, his contract yeah, runs. Oh, okay. Their contract so, no, will run until the end of the December year. December 21st. Okay. And, and uh, there are three, I mean, I haven't seen the proposals. I'm not a part of that, but um, that, that, that have presented. Um, I don't know if I told you the last time that we're going to add foot golf at the um, uh, golf course. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so they're setting, they're preparing to do that. Um, and we're also investigating the possibility of adding a splash pad, uh, you know, the kind of the water that comes out of the ground at the pool area. And I think, other than the concerts on the commons, will begin uh, this summer also. And the senior citizens, uh, the senior Olympics, will be in Ju August, July. When are they? I just put that in there. Anyway, they will be there. And then we have a wonderful high school liaison uh, person, uh, Ms. Schneider, Natalie Schneider. She was being installed in the National Honor Society that night, so she's le left a page and a half for me to read about the activities closing the school year at the high school. And um, we are finally going to have our contest for making recommendations to the board about naming the park at the end of Gozeal Parkway. We're, we're going to have a contest and we'll pass on the, the five top names for that park to the board and the board will make the decision. Sure, I didn't. Is it at Meridian? Or is it at Gozeal Parkway? It's the one that goes to the Parkway right across from the Historical Society. You know, we, we yeah, have a good... Yeah, and uh, a Boy Scout is doing some things there too. So, okay, okay. So it's 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 busy at the community rec, and once again, we all are in love with Brandy, our new director. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, no, unless you have questions. Uh, no. 
Well, I think we're all set. Um, the next item is uh, beautification. We don't have a representative tonight. So we'll move, move ahead uh, to our trail updates. Uh, just want to let you know that uh, uh, Mitch, Mitchell Lewis and his family and I uh, we, we toured the, uh, the open space across from Meridian. Uh, Mitch is here tonight and uh, I'd like to turn the podium over to him to give us a report on what we decided. Mitch? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Mitch Lewis. Uh, sorry I was late. I was at uh, La Crosse. Okay, so recently me and, uh, recently me and my parents have uh, went, went over the uh, idea for the fit strip. We went over the trail that is currently in place. Uh, currently it is... Uh, We've uh, encountered some obstacles. It is very wet. The elevation is very low. Uh, there's a chart of elevation uh, right here on the presentation. The elevation is uh, very low, so that means that uh, a lot of the areas will be very wet. And uh, with rain like we're having today, that may make the uh, trail unusable for a week, possibly up to maybe two or three weeks. Another obstacle are we found a lot of dead trees impeding the path. Uh, it's possible that they could be removed. In fact, I think they might have to be removed because uh, they're hanging over over top of the path or blocking the way of the path. And uh, finally, we, uh, as you can see, we went over the path. Um, the area in blue. Uh, is the area where we eventually branched off the trail that is currently in place. Um, that trail is, a, is again, very wet. It's a uh, low elevation. And eventually there, uh, there is an area that is dotted in orange, and that is where we found a, um old cabin. So we eventually branched off of the path a little bit to look at it, and we found um, another path that's already been uh, minorly cut, and uh, it's been dotted with orange spray paint. Uh, and eventually we found where the path ends, but that area was a little bit higher. So um, currently any so uh, solutions? We could possibly, uh, I think that an area in upper, an, uh, an area we could make the uh, area in blue branch back down to the uh, current path, but that area is very swampy, so we may want to avoid it. But we could make it an uppercase P shape Another possibility is that we could um, possibly uh, branch over the uh, ravine area that is that borders the uh, left, right side of the path. We could possibly make a bridge over that as the uh, ground is a lot higher in elevation and would make it a lot more usable. Thank you. Yeah. As you can see, there's, uh, there's some work that has to be done uh, taking this in, in various steps. Uh, once we consent on the uh, exact location of the path, uh, we'll have to get in there with uh, uh, a contractor to elevate some of the trails, which we will we will we will do, and uh, to, f to finalize the uh, location of the path. Uh, I think we we have we I believe we have consensus on the fact that it's going to be in the shape of a P. Uh, and it's so. going to come back to the original path. So it's going to be in a, a large loop. And uh, the path is going to avoid going into that private piece of property. Yes, I uh, think that's, that's the idea that we've, that we've had. So the next step is to, once we have that, is for the, th the three of us or and your family to go through with uh, the company that we do business with that has a blanket order with us called T&T uh, Tree Cutting and uh, they do all our path work and go in and uh, determine how much it's going to cost to clear that path and make it acceptable. And we can do that uh, within, I believe, when it dries out within the next couple of weeks. Uh, we'll, set, we'll, we'll call and we'll make a date so that we can go through with TNT, set up a date that's convenient uh, for you and your family, and we'll go through and uh, stake it out, 
have him go through and prepare an estimate of what it would take to make that trail acceptable. Okay, thank you. And also, this project, it is it does not have to be completed like right now this year. This could be a multiple year thing if we do not have the funds currently. Uh, it does not have to be finished this year. It could be uh, a multiple year thing. Okay, that's okay. a very excellent point. And I think the key to that is how much has to be done and of course, how much is it going to cost? Yeah, that, I think that's a very big part of this. So if it's, uh, if it's a multiple year thing, we'll certainly uh, do that. If we can do it in one year, we'll do it in one year. But we'll call TNT, and I'm repeating myself, but we'll get back with you and uh, get this thing rolling. And thank you so much for your effort in this concern. We're not finished yet. It's going to take some additional work. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you very much for coming. Mitch, Mitch. before you leave, do you have a copy of your presentation so I can put it in the minutes? Um, I did not bring copies, but I emailed it to Mr. St. Pierre. So oh, well, then he'll send it to you. Uh, well, or you could email. Would it be better to email oh, okay. it to you? Um, uh, don't leave until you get my email. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Email it to both of us. Okay. okay. Any comments from the board? Other than the fact that we've got a real gamer working with us. Yeah. You, know, you guys have got to be proud of him. Yeah. And, and uh, Thank as you. you have every right to be. <laughs> and uh, I like you because you're not pompous. Yeah. <laughs> right? You're a down to earth, getting the dirt in your fingernails kind of a kid. And that's the yeah. kind of kids that we have here. Thank you. you fit and all he has to do is smile and we're all following yeah. him, right? Amen. <laughs> exactly. He, he can sell you anything. Good <laughs> There's a future in what you do, and you're, you're honing your skills very well. Thank it's, you. Uh, it's going to take some work, but uh, thanks for your support. Thanks for your idea. We appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, the wildlife uh, sanctuary. Uh, Pat, anything new to report? I'm working with Ted, and we're developing a video. Um, it's going to be called a walk in the woods and um, basically it's going to be highlighting the spring flowers that are currently in bloom on the trail we're not going to have any verbiage we're just going to uh, tape the sounds of the birds as we walk the path so that it's a nice quiet little walk if you want to do it at the end cliff we'd like to put whatever you have in the new guide that's being published uh, at the end of the video so people can see where to find the trail. And um, next week, I think we're going to start filming. Pat, thank you so much. And now, let me understand, you, you want, on, that, on the trail entrance, you want uh, some sort of a pocket where we put the guide or? or maybe no, no, I just want a copy to give to Ted so when we complete the walk in the woods they can see this come up like this yeah and they can see oh this this is where we are and if I want to take my own walk this is where I go okay That's thank it. you mm-hmm okay. Pat anything else uh, that's all the wildlife okay the centennial farms uh, Daryl well we got a we have a load of mulch there that needs to be spread, and we're just waiting for a dry day. And then I want to go in there with uh, a diesel tractor with a loader in it, and I want to demonstrate how to uh, remove the fallen trees and uh, hit the low spots with the mulch. And uh, I need another, I need one helper to uh, spread the mulch as I go along. But this demonstration will uh, prove to you how to uh, save money for the township. And uh, we can go on from there. Okay. All right, we need one man, one person to help one me. One person to help me. And uh, yeah, one, you, me. one would you recommend? Whatever is dry, you know. So we have to do it uh, within the next couple of weeks? Whenever, you know, if we don't have any rain and right. you know, we don't have any mud. We will get you a volunteer. Okay. Have no. you by any chance solicited the Boy Scouts? I uh, I haven't. No. They were always game for stuff like that. I, I haven't. But so I don't get, get one. Man, you might get eight, ten, twelve. 
I don't need that many. I just need one person. I just it gives them an opportunity to live together. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just at this one point in time. Am I correct? Right. All right. right. We'll How much physical operating. work do they have to do? Not much at all. I mean, just like, can I do it? <laughs> you and I could do it. Oh, okay. Well, I'll help you. Just give okay. me a call. Okay. Okay. That would be good. Okay. okay. Pat, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right, as far as the placekeeper is concerned, uh, I will call uh, Reverend uh, Eubanks to see if we can get some volunteers from the St. Thomas Church to go in and uh, spread the chips that are there when, the, when it dries out. Is that for both the wildlife and for the... Because um, I have chips that have to be spread too. Well, we can do it, we can do it both, yes. Okay. I'll, I'll call them and ask them to do both. Are you ready for the chair? Uh, when would you be ready, Pat? Uh, um, After it dries up a little bit? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, does anybody have any uh, uh, other comments? If not, we'll proceed. Uh, we'll skip down to the open space uh, for the trail guide. Uh, I talked to, uh, we have Whipple Printing who is doing some of the necessary work to uh, using the desktop publishing. We gave them a lot of information and uh, they're still working on it. They haven't got it finished yet. So they'll, uh, they'll have it finished very quickly. Uh, Bert, there is one thing that uh, we have to do. I think we're going to have to revise the trail for the, for the Manchester Trail. The way it looks right now is not the way it'll probably end up due to Mitch's work that he's been doing. So we'll probably have to revise that section. So uh, I think we should do that rather quickly. Okay. Okay. So I think all we have to do is keep... Uh, I've asked him, I says, uh, you know, let's get this thing going, let's get it done so we can get it published. And it's going to cost quite a bit less than the last publication because of uh, the information that was given to them and as far as the, the, its professionals, the lack of work that uh, they had to do to, uh, to get it printed. So uh, uh, I'm looking forward to having this thing wrapped up as quickly but as properly as possible. Um, as far as the next item, uh, letters to new residents. Pat, anything else? I sent out nine letters to um, okay. people who were on the list that I got from the township. And Ted and I put a notice on the web page that people wishing to be on our early notification list should email in their email. And we have received one person so far. Great. Getting that back. Okay. All right, there's, there's one additional infesta or one infestation that uh, we've had to con contend with, and it's called the uh, oak wilt. And Pat Nielsen has been following that very closely, so I would like to uh, impose on Pat again to give us an update of uh, what it is, what it isn't, how bad it is, and so on and so forth. Uh, Wally. Uh, has uh, uh, made us aware of this issue, and that's the reason why we have curtailed the wood cutting, was because of the uh, uh, infestation issue with the oak wilt. So, uh, Pat and Wally, if you have anything, so can uh, can I just throw in before you go any further that it is a potential yeah. infestation. Right. That's from it's the it's not here. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. But we don't want it to get here. Yep. Right. Okay. Yeah. And, and that's what we've already determined. I talked to um, Daryl Ream, Dale Ream, and we discovered that last fall when Savon put in their new landscaping, uh, one of the trees was a red oak and it had the wilt. The tree was removed immediately. Um, what we have started putting in place we're working with the uh, Michigan Forestry Department and with Michigan State. 
we're in what I'm calling the educational phase. Um, I put the booklet developed by the forestry department on our website. <coughs> Wally has put in, excuse me, <coughs> I think it's allergy time. Wally put a very nice article in the paper. Um, Dale is alerting all of the city workers who are out and about in the township, um, showing them the booklet and telling them to get educated on it. He's contacted anyone who does tree cutting for us, giving them the information, so they are on the alert. Um, when we had dumped the junk, we put up uh, flyers that were showing what it looked like so that they could look at it before they put wood in the bins. I think it was gone by the time you folks got there, the wind. But we started trying to do that. Um, we also, and this is, I think, going to be the last phase of the educational part. What I call this is preemptive, you know. Um, is to start trying to get some volunteers to, in the July 4th, uh, mid-August time frame is when the leaves start showing the wilt, to have people help us walk the trails and walk the open spaces to, and it's really iffy because you have to actually find the leaf and then find the tree that it comes from. Um, if we can get enough people in the woods, um, working with everyone who wants to help with that, which is a good time to start um, Friends of the Trails. Uh, if we spot anything, the National Forestry will send a person out. They will um, locate. It works like um, one tree gets it and then it spreads out and you end up with a whole like grove mm -hmm. that is infected. It doesn't go in the wind, it goes through the roots and everything. Um, he will come and there are two options for controlling it. The first one is chemical. It's extremely expensive and if you have a large area that you're trying to contain, really difficult to do with chemicals. Um, Michigan does not own this equipment, but they have access to it, which is a special digger that will come out and dig a trench around the infected area <coughs> to stop the infection from going throughout the wooded area. So that's in place. We just have to give a phone call, and they will send someone out. Uh, concerning your proposal to have a group of volunteers go through it starting in July? Around the July 4th around, time frame. Around the July 4th time frame. Mm -hmm. um, I think we can use this venue to ask uh, four volunteers right. to come forward and let us, and we can establish a date that we could do it. We could meet here at the township hall, mm -hmm. have a little uh, study, a uh, little educational session and then we could break up into groups and go through the the trails and uh, identify uh, this uh, disease. Um, in addition to uh, the appeal that we're making here on the air to either call uh, uh, call the township, uh, Pat would you want to call the township office, uh, send us emails, put it on the website, what would you recommend we do it? Um, I think at this point in time, I'd like to get the plan and then bring the plan back at the next meeting. That way, if, if I want to have it through township, I can check with Carol to see what's the best way for her to do it. Okay. And we'll get a coordinated planned effort for it. Okay. Let's, let's put that uh, on a to-do list for June. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, uh, we'll announce it at the June meeting as far as the details are concerned. Right. And I think if we can establish a date that we'll meet here at the Township Hall and then separate into groups. Mm -hmm. So any organization or group of people that want to volunteer for this effort, we'd be more than happy to have them join us. Okay. 
all I wanted to do was to underline the need. You know, we, we didn't take the emerald ash borer very seriously at first. And we've lost our ash trees. They yeah. are beautiful trees. They look like vases full of flowers when they, so. when they grow. And they're dead now. Yeah. yeah. And if we, if we don't yeah. jump ahead of this one a little bit, it doesn't take a lot to recognize the problem. Yeah. As the old saying says, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Well, the forestry people in Michigan State were just ecstatic that we are taking a proactive approach sure. and, okay. and they're going to give us as much help as they can. The, the reason that yeah. I put the, put the notice out about moving firewood was for that reason. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. we just got our system working. It's frustrating to me that we have a great wood cutting system here now. And all of a sudden this pops up with the, this oak, oak wilt disease and it comes from under the bark kind of like the emerald ash borers did. Uh, there are ways to, if you have oak in your wood stock the, for, for burning, if you're concerned mm -hmm. about it, one of the simple things you can do is put a tarp over it and cover all of the edges of the tarp with rocks or, or dirt. Mm -hmm. It will suffocate this fungus. Okay. I also think that some of the oak trees that are on private property, whether it be uh, uh, private, uh, you know, vacant property or neighbor's homes, should be aware of this issue as well. well. well that's but, why we had a good get point. into the time frame when we're going to be asking for volunteers. I think we need to also put notices out to the homeowners to walk their property and look at their red oak trees. Without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. so we're, we're going to try and make this a planned, comprehensive approach. Wonderful. Okay. So, although the stuff could be in a, in a dead limb laying on the ground, if you trimmed your oak tree right. during this period, the, the openings in that tree are particularly susceptible to getting yeah. this this problem. Bert had a, had a good point, and I'm sure you want to talk about it, about the, this, this last event that we had. What do you do if you get red oak in the bins? Oh, well, actually, I wasn't going to talk about that, although that was something that we thought about before I dumped the junk. Um, so I was going to bring up the fact that the Conservancy and the Grosville Historical Society are working together on a heritage tree program to identify and protect the significant trees on Grosville. So we've um, announced that at the Earth Day meeting and it's been in our newsletter. So I think that you know, we're raising awareness about trees in general and then these two kind of opposite ends of the spectrum sort of issues, you know, one the threat to oak trees and then one you know, protecting our magnificent trees. It all works together. So I think raising awareness about trees and just getting people interested, we're encouraging people to go out and measure their big trees. And while they're measuring, they can look around and look at the red oaks and see what's happening there as well. Many, many years ago, when I had all brown hair, I was on a committee called the Natural Resources Commission. And we did that survey. And right, Pam, that was uh, Pam 50 Fruitry. years ago, yeah. Well, Pam is, Pam is, she is the one who brought this up again. Yeah, so she's probably a great resource. And I'll look through my old stuff and see if I've kept anything also. We have a list of the trees that were identified in 1964, okay. so we want to see if they're still around. And well, This was 94 when I was working on it. Okay, well, it goes back when you were well, just a youngster. <laughs> <laughs> just a youngster, there you go. Thank you, I'll give you the quarter later. <laughs> Pat, thank you very much for that uh, oh, you're for that report. And uh, again, without sounding redundant, uh, we have to. Uh, the key here is to develop a plan, and to then to execute the plan. Right. Okay. All right. That uh, completes all the items we have on the agenda. What I'd like to do now is just go around the. Uh, uh, the group and see if there's any additional uh, comments and I'll start uh, Wally any additional no further comments? comments today Pat um, I, I just want to bring up one more time for the um, Island Fest are we going to have any kind of booth or anything like that I I'm not going to say no I just we haven't developed any plans yet uh, we hope to, to at least have the uh, 
uh, the open space guides finished by then. That'd be nice so that we could have it available. Okay. There, there are, there's booth room from what I've been told from their committee, but there is no booth available with electricity. I had mentioned to you getting the um, forestry's trailer where they have a display of trees and everything. Uh, they called me back and uh, Dale Ream was willing to let us have a three-quarter ton truck to go pick it up and bring it here. They were willing to um, pay for the mileage. I was willing to house them because they have to have volunteers. Mm -hmm. But they couldn't get the volunteers to run the trailer, so we can't use that. But I would like us to consider using it in the future because I think it's a great educational tool. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's free. Good. Why don't you consider doing it on the August 22nd date? We could do that. Okay. Yeah. Get yourself some, some extra advertising for this. But we have to really reserve it quickly. Well, find out how big the trailer is, and maybe you could set it up on the lot outside uh, by Meridian and McComb and give another attraction for people okay. that day. Okay. They're going to try it for the 22nd time. Okay. Okay. I'll give them a call. Okay. The Conservancy is going to have a booth at Island Fest, so, you know, we could put information about Oak Wilt or something at our booth. Good. Yeah. Just to get the word out. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, if you could get paper copies, like the one that I have on the website, that'd be great. It's a, it's a really good booklet. Okay. okay. Uh, Daryl, anything? Uh, on, on Dump the Junk, I think we should have a separate... Uh, not a large trailer, but a small enough trailer for uh, the aluminum and pot metal. Because uh, you get more money, you know, for, for that stuff than you do the, uh, mm -hmm. and we're mixing it all together. That was the only thing I was thinking. You mean one for aluminum and the other for steel and yeah, everything right, else? Right, right, okay. right. Um, why, you, why you brought that up, I believe, as far as the uh, uh, donation for the, uh, uh, the steel that we've collected from uh, for Fritz, and that donation is going to go to the uh, Grusio Rowing Club. With the exactly. Group. We decided. Do we know how much we got, or we haven't sold it yet? Um, no, I don't believe we have. Okay. But uh, I think we could make them more money if we uh, did that. And then also for the wood, uh, we need an extra container for the wood. Yes. Instead of two, we need three. We need three. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And then uh, the uh, the waste that comes in, if we had a uh, somebody there with a mulcher, we wouldn't need as many containers. You mean a grinder? A grinder, yeah. yeah. To mulch up the uh, the waste, because uh, that that is a bulk. That is a really a large bulk yeah, there. Uh, let's you, have, you would have to have somebody very trustworthy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you'd have to well, have... A lost arm would not be good. We no, could have... No. Uh, just a thought. Why you thought? What would be wrong with asking maybe two or three of our local wood, company, yes. wood cutting companies to, yes, to come in uh, and maybe donate the use of the chipper? They would have to run it. Right, they would have to run. Okay, Wally, is there any, uh, uh, before we do that, before we even propose that, are there any legal implications for that, uh, that type of service? Anytime you're doing forestry, you're using chippers and chainsaws, there's a, there are two issues. The one the overlying is, is safety. Mm -hmm. uh, the second is noise. Yeah, and you know but the liability would have to be on them, hundred percent. Well, yeah, well, it's yeah. pretty hard to get somebody to do that. I, I okay. think. Is there any, would that be something that we would want to get uh, our attorney to, to look into I, and say? I don't if know we that we need our attorney, but I certainly can look into it. Yeah. In other words, we would not operate the chippers. We would the uh, the in other well, words the wood cutting and the. the uh, uh, whether it's TNT or whether it's anybody else or uh, Keith Lehman or uh, Davey or whatever or, or Foliage Concepts or whatever, they would have to man that chipper. 
Now, let, let me just play devil's advocate with but you. But that would eliminate uh, three containers. Yeah. Let me, play, that you know, yeah. Yeah. let me just play devil's advocate. Why, do, why would I, a guy that runs a chipper and, and offers the service on Grozeal, want to come in and do the service for free when I can charge my customers and come to their house? Well, that's a point. You know, yeah, just that's a point. Right. Don't, don't, don't hang a whole lot on that, but I will ask. Well, we have to weigh what the uh, containers cost versus, you know, yeah. Yeah. containers are like 100 and, what, 110 to $150. I mean, we might. We might uh, Pay him that to chip it up, but it'd be well worth it. Yeah, you mean pay him? That's that's a possibility. You know, you still got to get rid of the chips. Well, you can get yeah. rid of them at my house. I'll take them all. <laughs> I know you will. <laughs> you got your all of Okay. I knew there was an angle. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's at least ask. No, no, I mean maybe we could. Uh, we could get maybe three of them to come in. Uh, what would they? Just to, one chipper. The cat. The question is, would they volunteer to do it for free? If not, what would they charge? They'd be there. You come in and you'd uh, uh, chip your uh, your brushes. Your, I could work on it. Okay. I can work on that right. part. Let's take it. Let's let's ask the question. Yeah. Let's ask the question. If we don't ask, if we don't ask, we won't know. No, there's no law says you can't ask. But that questions. would save a lot of time. Are you and Daryl are going to look into it. From I'll look two into it from just from, from a township standpoint. And oh sure. Look into it if you don't. And then we can it. we can check. Uh, Let's do that. For, I would suggest, you know, Wally, correct me if I'm wrong. Let's check with the township first, and then, if it sounds like it's feasible, then we'll contact right. a couple of the companies to see if they would volunteer. Okay. We'll do. Yeah. Maybe. Maya. Yes. Um, I forgot to mention that the West River Yacht and Cruising Club invited the community to attend its opening at the marina. The open ceremony on May 16th from 3 o'clock to 5 at Lodge's Edge. And Kathy Walker, who is a member of We Kayak, um, they will be starting their season May 26th. And they, it doesn't matter how skilled you are at kayaking, they take anybody and everybody who is willing to try. And they have two or three different, different directions, more than that, that mm -hmm. they go. So, mm -hmm. um, and it's open all week too. I mean, you can use the launch site all week. Don't just have to come on Tuesday evening. Okay. I forgot to mention that. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I second. We're going to motion to adjourn to a private closed session. Yes. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. The meeting is closed. Thank you all for coming. Okay. Good seeing you guys. Uh,